I know you're here today to take a look at the Tick Watch 2, but this just came in this package. And all I can tell you in this bag is a prototype, brand new, trailblazing flagship watch from a company we know of as being a leader in smartwatches. And it's coming as part of a group that are going to the Pro Board's technical experts. These guys analyze for the major companies uh, a lot of things related to firmware and software and issues that visitors, uh, owners, um, and contributors have with their watches. And in this box is something that they have organized. They've got one of these, each of them, the whole team, and I've got one here. I can't talk about it, but I'm going to show it to you at the end of this video. In the meantime, make sure you go and create an account on the Round Android Watches Pro Boards so you can participate in the fun. Now, on with today's show. Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. If you're here, well, that means you must be interested in the Tick Watch too, or you already own one and want to check out a few of the things we're going to talk about. Are you interested in buying one, or are you just hooked on smartwatches like I am? Whatever the reason you're here, welcome. We're going to take a deeper dive into the Tick Watch 2 today, talk about a few things, and show you some tips and tricks that viewers have, um, have already posted on the original review video we did on this one. Like, like, check this out. If I touch it, and I got it set up for that, or if I press the button, and you saw the screen brighten up a little bit, there it went dim. I can do this, press the side button three times, and it gets super bright. When you're out in the sun and you want to read like the battery power of the watch or the phone or the temperature, smaller things, and it's dim like that, triple tap. Wow. Hey, Android. Android watchmakers. Do this on our regular Android watches. How cool is that? It's always hard to see in the bright sun. This fixes that. Another fun trick, you take two presses. Let's see. There. Do you see that little flash? And it says a screenshot's been saved. Whatever your watch is on, if you want to take a quick screenshot of that uh, image, just double tap quickly twice. That's come in and a shout out to our viewers that know these little tips and tricks. And uh, I'm putting them in the show notes down below the videos. We'll add some more here and back on the original one. By the way, this is a really good resource for you guys on any of these videos is to look in the show notes and in the comments that are below the show notes on the official YouTube channel that you access, say, from a computer or definitely a source where you can scroll down and see what's down below including things like the link to buy this watch, which comes to us thanks to Banggood, who, um, they're super. They just decided they're going to carry the Tick Watch 2, and they sent this uh, review copy out for us to play with, and uh, wow, it's so much fun. Check the show notes. The link will take you right to this page, and you can check the price. It's fluctuating right now. It'll either be like a flash sale, which it is right now, cheaper than this, or I'll have a coupon for you added to the show notes that you can apply to bring the price down. So that's your best bet for purchasing this is going through our sponsor, banggood.com. Now, let's get on with it. We've got the phone with a bunch of things in here. we got the watch. I want to cover some stuff with you. Uh, let's talk about watch faces, first of all. The watch came with some stock watch faces. You saw that in the original video. And there were some other ones that I was able to add using a little plus sign that's at the very end when you scroll through. There's also another way of adding watch faces that the company is providing through this app called Movoy Store. All right? And then there's Android Wear watches. And yes, folks, we now can do this on the Tick Watch 2, which is an Android 5.1 based watch. This is not an, uh, uh, an Android Wear watch. Its operating system is original, open market Android, like all the other Android watches. But some magic has happened in the overlay of the firmware or secondary OS that Tickware has put on here that allows us to actually push watch faces from things like Watchmaker directly to the watch. 
So let's begin. I'm going to set this aside and we're going to play with the watch first. Here it is. I light it up and I'm pressing and holding. When you do that, of course, it's going to give you the thumbnails. And look, that watch face disappeared and was replaced with the watchmaker logo. This operates kind of like a folder, and inside that folder are other watch faces. Then we have the regular watch faces, separate Android Wear watch faces, like this one, a commercial one you can purchase and install, uh, using the, the basic push technology of just putting it on the phone, and the phone will automatically unpack it and send it to the watch, like you're used to on Android Wear. Then you have stock watches. You have other ones that you can download from the Moboy store. It does not accept um, Android, regular Android uh, watch faces that we've used on our standard Android watches, at least not yet. So we're limited to a whole different universe of watch faces than what we're used to. And again, if I scroll all the way to the very end, I've got the plus sign and tapping that is basically the same as going into the Movoy store, which we may as well do right now, and taking a look at the Watch Faces tab here. So you have all these different watch faces that you can download, and they're exactly the same ones that you see there. All right. While we're in this, let's go home. Home shows you that in this store, you have other things you can actually get access to. These are some of the watch faces. These are top choices, which include apps, must-haves. They're just kind of categorized into uh, these groupings. But you can see them individually by using these tabs. All of the watch faces. There's a tab for social, which isn't populated yet, but I presume there's going to be some sort of social interactive thing going on. You have tools, which are a whole variety of apps. Some of them I've installed. Some of them I haven't. And then a health and fitness, which right now has a uh, music uh, application, which I wasn't able to get to work, so I haven't downloaded that one. We'll look at some of these as we go through this whole thing, but just to show you, once you um, install the application called Tickware Global and you launch it, set up your account and get into it from the main uh, face, you can actually go into the store right here. And the first time you launch it, if you haven't installed the store, it's going to take you over uh, Google uh, Play Store so you can download it and make sure it's there. Once you've got it in, then you just touch it and it links right back to there. And back button should take me back. Hit it twice. There we go. So Tickware, once we're in here now... Um, you can go to the watch faces, since we're talking watch faces, it loads up the watch faces that are on your watch in the order they are on your watch. Whoa, what do you mean? You can change order? <laughs> yeah, watch this. If I press and hold and I come over here, let's say I want this one in front of that one, and I want this light blue one on the uh, end, like there, of that little blue segment, okay? And I'm just going to pick that one. Notice it jumped over here. They're not reordered yet. But if I go out of here and I come back in again, it re-interrogates the order that is on the watch. And now they're in the order that I just re-sequenced them. So you can put your favorite watch faces at the beginning, at the end, wherever you would like. You can group them by digital, which is kind of what I've done because I typically use digital. I put Watchmaker at the very beginning. And that's the one I'm going to be playing a lot with. And then I've got my analog ones. And then I've got the uh, animated ones. And there's all these different amazing animated watches down here, too, that actually do something. They've got like an animated uh, wallpaper associated with them as well. doesn't go long. It goes until it times out. And then the, the watch goes into ambient mode because this thing has a long battery life. And so it changes so that um, you can save battery. We showed you some of these in the other one, in the first video, but there's a whole lot more, including some scenes like this. See the water moving, the clouds? Or like this, an actual city landscape scene. And I'm just tapping them over here and selecting them right off of the app. 
little faster than the press and hold that you would do on the watch. All right, let's get back to our wear because we want to uh, play around with the, the watchmaker. And now it's back on this particular watch face. When I press and hold and I bring up the watchmaker watch face and hit that gear, it brings me into another scrollable display of all the different watch faces that I've downloaded from Watchmaker that live and breathe on this watch. Some of these are free. In fact, it comes with, uh, I think that one is the default that you get. And you can push some free ones over here without having to do anything to test to make sure that it's working. But guess what? You can actually load the uh, Watchmaker app from the Google Play Store and get into it without even needing to create an account. I mean, it's helpful if you do, but when you're in here, I'm not signed in or anything. You can create account, then you can sign in, then you can look at your watches, you can change the settings, you can do all sorts of stuff, and you'll get these uh, categories of watch faces that keep changing over time. You can select which ones you would like, and you can push them directly to the watch once you're on that watchmaker watch face. You have to switch. If you're on something else like this one, and isn't that cool? That's a commercial watch face. Look down in the links below. This was sent a long time ago so that I could do a demo on a video. And I told the poor folks, I said, I don't do wear. I can't show off your watch face. Well, now I can. And, uh... Yeah, I'll have a link for this one down in the show notes so you can purchase it if you'd like to. But what you want to do is make sure that you're on the watchmaker icon here. And whatever watch face you're on is going to be the active one that we selected with that gear. But once you're there, if you're in the watchmaker um, application, you can select one of these. And if everything is set up right, you just simply tap it. It'll bring up the watch face, and what's really cool, sorry, my phone's broken. I keep playing it with my thumb, but this case is really old. It brings up the watch face. Oh, look at that. It's different. It shows you uh, your events, if you have any. I mean, it's live. It's, it's, it's in the current date and time and everything, um, and I hit that button there, and look, it sends it. It loads it, and now that watch face has been imported into the tickwear too. And I've got it there. Now, the night view is just a dimmer version of the day view. Some of them totally change. This one, not much, but it does dim. There, you see it automatically dim. And they can have hot spots. You see there? Look, look, see those little squares light up? That means that there's a hot spot right there, which switches it to digital or back again. And then this, I guess, is an update Oh, whoa! Wow! It takes me to the sports stuff. Oh, I've been looking for that. Oh, I'm glad I just downloaded this one. This is where you can do all of your um, timed things like runs and walks and indoor uh, and, and cycling and then a freestyle. And I actually have accumulated some data. And later on in the video, if we have time and I stop rambling, I'll try to show you some of the data results from here. Oh, what the heck? I'll show you right now. Outdoor run, outdoor run, cycling, outdoor walk. I think this is the one I actually did, a walk. And um, accumulated data. I mean, really data. The other ones, uh, I was riding in a car and playing with it. Mrs. Tix was really nice to drive me all around. Okay, so uh, here's the number of steps that I actually walked and the uh, whatever that is per miles, right? Uh, two two miles per hour. <laughs> All right. I was strolling around the neighborhood. How's that? I, I strolled for two and a half miles, though, for an hour and 13 minutes with a few pauses along the way. But you get all that data. And then that data, of course, can transfer over to uh, three different apps. Strava, Run, Runtastic, is that it? And uh, the Google Fit. But I digress, because this all came about because of the watch face that I can switch, or I can go right into sports and get started. Ah, oh, love it, love it. Press and hold, and I'm back to my watchmaker. Press the gear, 
and it's now the first one. Whatever your most recent one is the first one, and then the next one, and the next one, and so forth, in the order that you've used them. And this one, this one, Android designers, I want to watch face like this that'll run on all of our stock Android watches, okay? It's so cool. It's digital, but it's analog. Well, no, it's it's verbal. It's verbal. And it doesn't, you know, temperature. By the way, the temperature is accurate. It's pulling that from the watch as long as, I mean, the phone, I'm pretty sure, as long as you've got it all integrated with a specific app. Yes, I'm jumping. I know I'm jumping. Okay, I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to show you that if you have the Mobi Store thing going, and you go into the tools, and you put in Mo Weather, yes, it'll give you Mo Weather. And Mo Weather will tell you the information for your location and any other locations you want to install um, immediately on your watch. And I'm pretty sure it's that little thread of interface that most of these Wear watches are using to pull the accurate forecast thunderstorms. And there are here right now. Well, not right at the moment, but I mean, it's passing through. And the current temperature, which I can confirm is accurate. Okay. So when we're in Watchmaker and you have all of these different things here, you can um, mess around with them. And most of them have active spots, well, not most, but some have active spots that you can touch to bring up different things. Here's a wild one. It shows you the position of the sun. I don't know if you can see there's a little, if you can't see it, I'll brighten it up. One, two, three. There, you see the little track of the sun? And it's uh, sunrise and sunset are on there and the position of the sun right now. Creative stuff. I don't know anything in the clock engine for the Android watches that allows this, but Android Wear does. So we have covered so far the ability of the Tick Watch to have a variety of watch faces installed from the stock ones, the store, the plus sign, or Watchmaker, or I presume one of the other type of Android Wear service apps, Watchmaker being the one I'm working with right now that let, let you push it, or um, purchasable ones right off of the Google Play Store. Okay, you still with me? Let's, let's switch gears now. Let's slow down a bit, take a breath, come back here to the main page, home page. I'm going to tap up here and this page has a little secret hidden down here. When you tap on the little tick version number, and you hit it just right, maybe a few times, it asks you if you want to enter developer mode. Yes, confirm that. And now, under advanced settings, you have all these different capabilities to you. You with me so far? You had to tap that thing down at the bottom to get to the advanced settings to get in here. See the thing called 1024? You're going to want to tap that. Now, when you're in here, it normally opens with no. Um, but when you turn it on, you can turn 1024 on, and that's going to allow you to sync apps from the phone to the tick watch. This is required for you to install Android Wear apps onto the watch. All right? When you've done that, and you have the advanced settings all set up, then when you download Android Wear Watch applications to the phone, and you come in here, and you say Sync Apps, it syncs those apps over to the Tick Watch 2. Okay? Let's play with apps, shall we? We have a bunch of apps available to us from that Mobi store, and... Um, they're installed on here already. So I want to show you some of those and also talk about the fact that there are some actual Android watches, uh, Android apps that will, will install themselves automatically here. And it's kind of weird. It's like, um, you know, an APK is an Android package, the thing that you, you load in and then you install into a standard Android watch. If that APK has another little wear package embedded in it. The phone, the phone, once it's installed on the phone, if it is connected to a wear watch, will unpack and install that secondary package to the watch. 
Turns out that when you uh, do that with our tried and true uh, Android uh, AIDA64 that we use to get data from the phone, for example, or for other Android watches, you tap on the darn thing, it got pushed over here, and it works. Yeah, I didn't have to do anything. And this is Android, not Android Wear. I'm not using their, their Movi store, anything. It's just, I had it on the phone. It showed up on the watch. What can I say? Here, I can go into System, for example, and now you can learn more about this watch. I'm going to show you some stuff. Some of you technical folks, this will be like, yay! And others will go like, wow, would he get over it already? I got a serial number. Here you go. I got installed RAM and total memory. Well, yeah, pretty thin. But hey, um, it's what we've got. Internal storage space is about one and a quarter gigabytes. And I've got 700 megabytes free. And I got quite a few mm, apps installed here. So you got some room. You can put some songs and things in there. Then it talks about external storage space. One and a quarter megabytes. And of that, I have almost all of it free. Where it is, how do you get to it? I don't know. But there is external storage. There is internal storage. And then there's your RAM. So it's running 512 megabytes RAM on the processor. And you got two storage compartments on this watch. And then it goes on and on and on into stuff down there. Now, if I switch it, can I? How do I do this? Switch it, all right, to the CPU. This is what we're running. That's an instruction set. It's a 32-bit, two-core, running at this clock speed. And then the rest of this is technical stuff, right? I'm really not a techie, folks. So those of you who are, I'm so sorry I'm letting you down. Those of you who aren't, I hope I'm talking more your language and not too geeky. Um, 400 by 400 pixel resolution, of course, in a round screen. But that's typical what we're seeing on the flagship Android watches that give us um, uh, AMOLED screen with that high kind of uh, capability or, or, or uh, pixel resolution. It's a 35 millimeter circle, 1.38 inch diameter. They're 1.4, what is it? 1.39 inch? Yeah, about 1.4 inch. It's the same, it's the same size screen. Hey, it's edge to edge. Look at that. It's, there's no bezel issue here. And there's no flat tire that you see on Wear. Two of the drawbacks, Android Wear has a black band at the bottom. Pure Android watches typically have a black circle all the way around. The Tick Watch 2 doesn't have either of those. Okay, I'm just going to show you the other stuff without talking about it. And you guys that know more about this stuff can play with that. All right, that's good enough. And what else have we got? Network, you don't need to go into. Battery at 90% and discharging right now. Good. Lithium ion, the temperature, the voltage, the discharge rate. It's a 300 milliamp hour battery. That's good to know. And Android, it's running Lollipop. This is an Android watch running oh, Android apps, Wear apps, their own stock watch faces, and, and Android Wear watch faces. It's a cool watch. Android ID, build number, fingerprint. I probably shouldn't be showing you guys some of this stuff, but... I don't know what I shouldn't, so I'm just going to leave it. Devices. Okay. You guys know what this is about. USB. No camera. No OpenCL. No CUDA. No Volkswagen sound. No PCI devices found. It's a watch. All right. Anyway, I wanted to show you that because that is an Android app that came in here. Here's a fun Android Wear thing that you can download called App Manager. And when you do this and you check that you want it to uh, show you the installed and updated uh, apps, and I guess you could also do deletions if you want to, then when you're over here and you open that Wear Apps Manager, which is downloadable from the Google Play Store, it shows you all of the apps that you have installed. 
And the watch faces too, those commercial ones. There's the name of it. It's called an H01 watch face. That's the one I downloaded from the uh, Google Play Store. Tells you information about it. You can launch it on the phone. You can uninstall it. You can open it on Google Play. Really? Great, because I wanted to give a shout out to these guys for sending this out. <laughs> and here it is. It's from that place, Forza One Studios. And uh, it's a really fun uh, watch face. It does uh, hybrid stuff with weather. Shout out to these guys. Uh, they got three or four other ones they sent. Um, some of the features work, uh, but this one's really cool. I really like that one. So, And you can, using that app manager, as you can see, or Wear Apps Manager, you can go in and look at any of these directly from the uh, Google Play Store. You can open them on the phone if there's configurations you can set. And uh, they are what's on the watch, and you can uninstall them if you want to. So this is a handy app to have, the Wear App Manager app. And again, you install it directly on your phone, and you can download it from the Google Play Store. And it gives you a good idea of what you've got on the watch. But you can also... Yeah, I know. I went to lunch. I'm back now. Um, you can also take a look at what you've got on your watch uh, by going into the Mobi store here on the watch. We've got the Mobi Voice store here, right, on the phone. But you have it on the watch, too. And this shows you things that you have not yet installed that are part of the store. And they are watch faces and apps and again, they're broken up into those different categories like we saw on the app on the phone. But what's cool about this is if you swipe down from home, you can go over to My Apps. And when you get in here, this shows you all the ones that you actually have installed, whether they are a watch face or an application. And again, a lot of these watch faces I installed from the plus sign going all the way to the end. And this gives you a way that you can look at them and study them and delete them or whatever you'd like to do. Now, things like the FTP server are here as well as City Night, which is a uh, watch face. Um, and on and on and on. Try to find something like King of Glory. I don't even know what that is. It's a watch face. Screenshots of it. Oh, I just scroll down. There it is. I don't think I can do anything with it. But that's what the watch face looks like. And if I wanted to, I could just uninstall it. And it's gone. Now it's no longer on the watch. Huh, I hope I didn't like that one. Well, I can find it again. Then you can also go one more time and go over to settings. And in the settings, you can... Turn it on to auto-update if you'd like to, and get in about, which gives you very dark. Oh, triple tap. There you go. Barely read it. The version 1.0 of the, uh, the Moby Voice store on the actual watch itself. So that's available as well. Okay. Let's play with these apps now. You saw, again, a lot of these pre-installed ones are here. We went through those in the original review. And we get down to right about here. We talked about this one. And we've talked about that one. Calm. This is a good example of something that kind of works and kind of doesn't. Calm is a, an app that's for breathing and relaxing. And it says, take a deep breath. You can have it with a different image that has music in the background. Or, in this case, the earth, which is silent. Uh, you can add things to it, you can set times, and you can do all sorts of stuff, but it's about relaxing. And um, it has two of these installed things that show up on Android Wear, but they don't exactly work. When I go into here, it shows me kind of results which aren't being populated, and it adds, uh, lets me add something that doesn't show up. So this is an example of a standard Android app that is billed as having an interface for Android Wear, but it's made to run as an Android standalone watch. I believe Wear is supposed to be like one of those sedentary reminder things. It'll remind you it's time to relax, and when it does, you press that. You can open the app on the phone, and you can do your uh, calming, relaxing, breathing thing. But it's not really working. So 
A lot of them are like that. And here's kind of a rule of thumb. If it's an Android app or an Android Wear app and you put it or push it to your watch uh, and it requires some sort of talk between the watch and the phone, it's not going to uh, work for you. Uh, If it's standalone, for example, like um, this tip chart that I got, tip calculator, doesn't require me talking to the phone at all. It can do its own thing by itself, and I can put in some sort of a a bill for eating out. And uh, you notice it's now rounded to the next highest thing at a 20% tip. It comes up to that. When you add that and that together, it's rounded. But if I touch that... There's exact. So for those of you who want to leave the exact tip to get the exact amount for the exact percentage, I don't know, what's 18 typical, like average, and 20 is high or 22? Anyway, there you go. That's uh, an example of what it would be. And as you change these digits, everything changes there. And uh, it's above 50. So if I touch that, it rounds it up to the next highest dollar. I like that. Because I typically tip in a way that comes up with a total that rounds to zero. Then when I look at my end of the month uh, billing, I know all of my meal expenses had better end in dot zero zero, or there might be something funny going on. So I tend to round my tip either up or down based on um, what I'm feeling I want to give. And, And this app does that. But there's others that you can download that do it differently. But that's an example of a Android Wear app that can push to the uh, phone. And uh, standalone, it'll work. Here's one that doesn't. I just accidentally touched it. I thought it would be cool, so riding along with uh, Mrs. Tix while she was driving, I turned this thing on and found that I can go into a start a trip and I could, like, say driving, but it doesn't go anywhere. And theoretically, what it was going to do, it's called um, Tick. Oh, no, I touched this one. Trip Tracker. It's supposed to give you a track of the speed on, uh, you know, that you're traveling. Along with this one up here that uh, is supposed to do the same thing. Right here, speedometer. Oh, this looked like so cool. You could ride in your car, look at your watch and see what speed you're going and your top speed that you hit, and your average speed, and then change it to kilometers or miles per hour or knots. Well, I can tell you this. It's a really cool concept. And as this watch improves, and you can get the talking working between these two, I'm not sure if that relies on internal GPS or relies on a communication from the phone, and you have to have the phone with you. But either way, it's not working yet. There's room for improvement. But just to show you that these kind of apps can indeed be installed and uh, give you capabilities eventually. This one is a standalone. It's a a metronome that will hear it. And it's vibrating. And if you're going to jog at a certain speed, look at that. Went up to 129. If I got the... Whoa, it's because I'm playing with the little uh, tickle. I'm tickling it again. There you go. There, 70 beats per minute. So really nice concept to have along with you while you're exercising whatever you're doing. Um, And this works standalone. It does install and you don't need any connection. Another nice little app to play with. And this one, this one came from their store. I'm pretty sure. So, you know, they're getting all mixed up here because they just, it just uh, sorts them. But... uh, there it is. Metic. Metic is, uh, and you know that all these are going to work. Here's an interesting one, this flashlight. Well, now I can show you kind of how this downloading works. I'm going to hit download, and it should download it directly. Do you want to install the application? I'll say install. Now, you notice it's installing it on the phone. After I touch the button, that's the standard thing you get. Remember, you have to have, under the special options, permission to install third-party apps turned on on your phone in order to get it there. And now it's there, and I say open, and it doesn't do much. It just shows me flashing or full bright from the dots down at the bottom. That's because... As an app, well, you can use it as a flashlight, I guess, if you want to on the phone, but it's really meant to work on the watch. So when we go in here, now we should see a new one installed called Light or Flashlight. 
and it's not there yet. So what I've found is sometimes I got to come back and uh, maybe even reboot the watch. But oftentimes it'll it'll show up after just a few moments. And I have this one here called light. There we go. There's the bright white light, and there's the flashing one. So that's the app that I just installed. I don't need the phone with me anymore. I can go out with the watch on, turn that on, and I could actually use the watch as a bright white flashlight. Triple tap, and it gets super bright. Does it get bright for you? Yeah? Okay, good. And now it got a little bit dimmer. However, light I installed from there. That you just saw, but there's another light one in here, if I can find it. You see, you get so many apps going. There we go, called Flashlight. I think it's actually called Color Flashlight. And uh, it's not showing in here because when you install it, it doesn't actually run on the phone. It intends to just go onto the watch. And when I actually activate it, there it is. It's like another flashlight thing. But if I slide it, you can choose a primary and a secondary color if you want to. You can uh, change by touching. You can have it uh, blink or you can have it fade. So I'm going to try fading and I come back over here and you see it fade. So this particular flashlight-ish kind of an app has a whole lot more capabilities. Animation speed, you can set the screen brightness you want. And you can, of course, reset everything to defaults. Another flashlight downloaded by simply going in the uh, Google Play Store. And a hint, when you're in the Google Play Store, put in Android Wear space and what you want. Tip calculator, flashlight, uh, note taker, whatever. And you'll get different options. All right, running through things quickly. There's a file manager app that you can download that gets you in here to show you the contents of the watch. Um, sort of like a regular file manager. I found a problem with this and with the FTP thing that I'm not able to um, write to the watch. I can't transfer files onto the watch using either of those. I'm not sure if that's permanent or I'm just having some challenges. But the uh, file manager and the FTP, file transfer protocol, which when you run it on both devices, let you see the files that are on uh, your watch. The, the FTP client on the phone or the watch will let you connect via computer FTP to the device. It's off here. You got to put in that uh, IP address and that port number, which you saw also on here when we came up there. Okay, let's say an IP 0000 and it, your password and uh, username are both tick. And then when you activate it, okay, that's not working probably because I'm not on Wi-Fi. This one is, it goes green and then all of a sudden you're able to see everything uh, on your computer that's on your device. And this one probably the same once I activate Wi-Fi. That's the FTP client, and it works again, but I can't write to it. There's a, a game that you can do. It's not... Re, uh, scaled properly for the screen, unfortunately, and that, that's because of the higher resolution screen, and there may be a way to fix that too. But you got the jumping guy, and you're trying to get it through the uh, the posts, right? Yeah, I'm never good at this. <laughs> this is why, guys, I don't do uh, gaming things because I'm not a good gamer. But there's a game, and, and on and on. There's a lot more apps in here. Um, the flashlight we did, uh, that one, that one, the calm we talked about. Um, that's the other flashlight, the metric thing. This is the weather. It's going to show you weather in your location and other places. Uh, these don't work. My headlines was supposed to give me a, a, an RSS feed for news. But again, it's something that needs to talk to the phone, and that linking isn't working yet. Um, yeah, there it says no no thing. Uh, come back to this one. The remote camera is fun. The speedometer, the tip calculator. There's the other tip calculator and the trip thing. These two trip things don't work. The tip calculators do. VIP access is really something special. Not going to tell you about that, but that's something I use on the phone. However, it got pushed to the watch, but the two don't talk to each other, so I really can't use it on the watch. I use it on the phone. And then there's this last one, which is where... Um, uh, books and it'll actually 
allow you to read books on here once you put books onto the device. So that gets us to the last thing, which was the remote camera. Going to launch it here on the phone, and that's going to bring up an actual camera where I can bring over our Banggood people and uh, let you have an image of that. When I bring it up on here, we have what we've seen on some of the uh, higher-end uh, Android and even tethering watches. I'm going to move that off screen and point it here. The camera in the phone is now pointing, and I'm getting an image here in the watch. And I can take a picture by tapping that, and it captures the image. Picture taken. I can zoom in. Well, it's on the still picture now. and uh, It saved that picture, by the way, to the phone. You see, I can zoom in if I want to, and it's zooming in. I lost it once I move it, but it's zooming in on the uh, phone as well. And, of course, I can take a picture there. When I go over here, um, move it this way so you can see that a little better. See that thing? That rotates it from front to back, camera. Um, not sure what that one does. This one over here turns the flash on and off on the phone. And this one up here is a self-timer uh, option. So you can do all those things with this as well. Uh, it's not doing video. It's only doing uh, stills, but you can capture stills anywhere within the zone that you're able to reach to your phone. Now, the camera in the phone is not focusing. That's why it doesn't look very well in focus here on the watch. I'm rushing this thing because I don't have it really set up to demo properly, but it's just concept, proof of concept that the remote camera, which is an app that's available from their online store, uh, is functional and interfaces and works directly from the watch. So we've covered a lot. We've covered all these different applications and more. And I'm going to invite you guys, uh, as you discover apps that work or don't work, whether they're Android or Android Wear, uh, send them to me in the comments. I'm going to compile a list of them and put them in the show notes. So you can say, uh, I don't know, this app, it doesn't work. And I can list the app and say it doesn't work. Uh, if you get another one that does work, I'll list the app. I'll put the link to the, the app in the Google Play Store or the Wear, which is in the Google Play Store, but it's a Wear app. Put it there and uh, and give you some information about how well it works, like these tip calculators. There may be move, uh, music streaming things that work. I doubt it because it interfaces with the uh, phone, you know, necessarily. And as this technology improves and you're getting better linkage between these two, I'm pretty sure we're going to see more and more Wear applications that will actually work between the two devices and enhance the capabilities of your awesome Tick Watch 2. All right, we've covered the way, uh, uh, watch faces as well that are available through Watchmaker or other uh, uh, Android Wear watch providing resources. We have covered individual uh, Android Wear watches that you can purchase and download directly from the Play Store that install instantly. We've covered the stock watch faces that came with the watch, and we've covered the ones that you can get right straight from the uh, store, their own store, pushing it from the phone to the watch or adding it at the very end by clicking on the plus sign. Now, the only thing left is to get one, right? <laughs> I mean, what are you waiting for? I am very smitten for this watch. I really am. It's fun. It's not everything. It does things, you know, the tickle. It does all these things that uh, you don't see on Android Wear watches. But Android Wear does a lot of things. Uh, I mean, Android, your, your regular standalone Android watches. But the Android watches do things that you don't get here on uh, your um, Tick Watch or your Android Wear Watch. And it's just like a balance of what do you want, what can you use. This watch in particular has done great things as far as fitness goes in the way that it um, can accumulate data, pulling it in from an uh, online GPS and being able to export that data from synchronizing over here to the uh, phone and then through the phone out to any of these, Google Fit, RunKeeper, or Strava, 
And we've showed you, did we show you? I don't know if we showed you on the Google Fit. Let's get into this. Google Fit. Where's Fit? Fit. Okay. On Google Fit, I've got the data that's come in from the watch uh, through the app and exported or transferred over, so I'm able to track all this stuff on Google Fit. And yeah, it even brings over the GPS track on the Google map that you can expand and follow your uh, your track. It brings over that whole XML, not XML, what is it? X, you guys know what it is. It's the the data file that shows you your latitude, longitude, time, altitude, distance, da 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 da, and all of that stuff is available at least through Google Fit. So, phenomenal capabilities available right now through our our host sponsor Banggood, who's offering the Tick Watch Two straight out of China for a really decent price and lower. Check the show notes down below for the link and any coupons we may have. And thank you for watching. The thumbs up if you like this. Subscribing. And getting yourself started with smartwatch collecting. Tick watch too. Catch you later. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Here's that secret special unboxing. As promised at the beginning of this video, we're going to take a look inside this box brought to us through coordination from the tech experts at the Round Android Smartwatches Pro Boards with one of the major watch manufacturing companies. That's releasing a brand new flagship watch, which I'm not even sure I've got the right name and number for this thing. So I'm not even going to talk about it till we get inside of it. Here it is. In a nice black and brown box labeled smartwatch. Probably not the final packaging because this is prototype. There it is. Wow. Wow. All right. Let's take the band off. Oh, it just slid in there. Now there's a sticker on one of the bands. I don't know if it's an IMEI number or a serial number, but I'm going to take it off in case I need to keep that private. And we're going to take off the covering. Wow. And we have a prototype watch. With a SIM slot. Oh, this is a nice... Look at this. This is really well done. This has got uh, spongy material to help with the uh, waterproofing of this watch. It's got a charging port. Diodes for heart rate monitor. Screws to take the whole back cover off if you need to. Does that design look familiar? The back cover? But look at the bands. Removable bands. Sure looks like it. Speaker. Two buttons. I have no idea if there's enough juice, but if so, let's turn it on. See what it'll do. Oh, I heard a vibration. I'm seeing a, a symbol. Oh, you are too. Well, obviously, you're looking at the video. Okay. It's booting up. The bezel, silver, says smartwatch. It's got numbers like a tachometer band all or bezel all the way around it. It's definitely solid metal, plastic back. I'm going to say removable bands. It sure looks like it. In the box, coming along with it. Ah, there they are. Our two little black boxes, which contain the USB charging cable, which we expected. Ah. Oh with uh, the actual magnetic coupler, and it's the standard magnetic coupling. That's good. It's asking me to confirm some stuff. And at this point, an empty box. There's nothing in that one. Don't even need to open it. What to do? Let's get in here. We're going to confirm English. We've got uh, fitness stuff. We got a smartwatch platform. I'm going to be using Android. It's got a QR code we're supposed to scan that gets us into the tethering app. Why watch? W I I watch. You can probably find that also on the Google Play Store. You open it on the phone. You search for. Oh, oh there's a number. KW99. Finish. 
and we're there. Wow. Much more to come on this when we have a chance to do a review. See you later.